Today we're taking a look at the Vituvia electric bike. Let's get to it. <laughs> at the Vituvia Gemini electric bike. The color on this thing, first of all, is money. My first impression of this thing when I unboxed it was it looks expensive, it really does. I have really no complaints on it as far as appearance goes. It looks expensive, it's big. So here's a couple little shots just of like the overall build quality and whatnot. I'll just get you guys a few close-ups here just to take a look at. It's a 1,000 watt motor in the back here and it is a 52 volt bike, so you definitely are gonna see some higher speeds on this one than 48 volt. They say it does 35 plus miles per hour, so we'll see if we can hit something near that. And it is actually a dual battery pack bike, so there's actually two battery packs in here. I didn't think there were, but you guys can see the top one there and then there's one in the bottom as well. So it is a 21 amp hour battery pack, again, 52 volts. Uh, so we should see some decent range and we should definitely see a decent top speed on this thing as well. But the general specs, 1000 watt motor, 52 volt, 21 amp hour battery pack. Apparently they're LG cells, so they should be decently good. 80 mile range, I'm assuming that's with pedal assist going at a low speed. And it is a 400 pound payload capacity, so you can be pretty heavy riding this thing if you need to be. I am six foot three and about 210 pounds, just as a reference for you guys. Um, so that's pretty much it. Again, there's gonna be a link below if you guys wanna check it out more. So far, I really have no complaints at first glance. This thing looks really good. I like it a lot. So I haven't had any really hands-on experience with this thing. I have pulled the brake levers a couple of times and a really nice feeling hydraulic brake. There's not a whole lot of bikes out there that I say have really nice brakes, but this one definitely has a nicer braking system than most. All right, so to get this out of our system, first off, there was a little bit of shipping damage. Uh, there was nothing really damaged besides this, uh, the gear shift selector. So I'll definitely reach out and see if I can get a new gear selector thing sent to me. Hopefully they'll replace that. And if so, that's great. Random little small fact, just a note for the company. If you guys are watching this, this was kind of like down and right here, kind of like crammed right here. Didn't look very good. So just start putting it like this on the handlebars instead of coming like super cramped right here and like super low so you can't see anything. Just go ahead and start putting them right here. <laughs> All right, let's go through some software. It does have an auto off feature, obviously. Simple controls here, up obviously goes to pedal assist. You can turn it up to five. It does have different functions here as well. And then if you hold down the plus sign, it turns on the headlight which is nice and bright, but that's pretty much it as far as software goes. Standard functions for e-bike screens, but it is a nice looking screen. Looks like it's pretty high resolution and it has a color display, so that's nice. Uh, 1.4 miles on this bike, so it's brand new, just a little bit of testing probably at the factory. One thing I noticed, the attention to detail on the Vituvia bike is so much better than uh, other e-bikes. The Vituvia is actually the same color as the e-bike. I'm not sure if that's standard across every color, but for this one, it's the exact same color match, which is really a cool touch. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the Vituvia Gemini right now. I'm gonna give this thing a full charge and then we are gonna get on a ride tomorrow, which is definitely gonna be fun. Uh, side note, if you care, <laughs> it came with a box and uh, you know it had the toolkit, the owner's manual and the charger in here. Let's get this thing charged up overnight and tomorrow we'll bring you guys back, get this thing on the road. take the Vituvia e-bike out for a ride. Definitely torquier than most e-bikes, that's for sure, right off the bat. I mean, this thing gets up to speed, dude. All right, first impression is this thing gets up to speed real quick, real quick. 52 volt battery pack, so definitely a little bit torquier than most e-bikes. <laughs> There's some serious voltage sag here. Jumped from 95% to 28%, it says. 
I don't know if I have to charge up both batteries separately. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I just plugged one battery in and it went to full and then the other one's dead, who knows? <laughs> but that's that's pretty funny. Um, okay, well, first impression is it's definitely torquey. It gets up to speed very quickly. And it's a big bike. I mean, it feels like a big bike. <laughs> and it just, it just feels good. It feels real good. And it's quick, man, dang. Motor says peaks at 1600 watts, so definitely better power than most you know e-bikes in the one to two thousand dollar range as far as comfort and overall riding so far i mean the riding position's good it's a little bit more mountain bike i guess than you know a cruiser bike or something like it's not the ultimate seating position for comfort but it's like a rugged bike so i get it like it's probably designed more for mountain use and whatnot than just streets but i mean still i mean not uncomfortable at all by any means um pretty smooth the suspension does its job okay i won't say it's like the most amazing smoothest most comfortable ride you know as far as like bumps and stuff goes but it's still not bad like i'm not it's not a negative thing it's you know like it handles bumps just fine and i probably could even just soften up the suspension too it is adjustable so i'm sure i could soften it up a little bit so anyway all right i'm gonna go ahead and just pull over we're gonna pull up the speedometer app really quick and then we'll anyway let's pull up the gps looks like we're tracking yep let's go for a top speed run let's do it i'm just mashing this throttle and we'll see how fast it'll get us let's go vituvia let's do it all right looks like it's maxing out at right around 32 miles per hour according to the speedometer doesn't quite feel like 32 miles per hour here but maybe it's because it's a big bike the gps will tell all let's see what we got according to the gps brakes work really well all right you guys ready for this let's take a look what we got for our top speed we got 29.4 miles per hour, so 30 miles per hour. So that was off by two miles per hour. Not a big deal at all. That's still pretty close. There's a lot of e-bikes that are like way off on the speedometer. So anyway, there you guys have it. 30 mile per hour top speed, really not bad. All right, now that we have that out of our system, let's get this thing home. I'm gonna do the full range test, see how many miles I get on one full charge. And uh, that's really the real world specs that you guys are gonna need. Coming up on the brake test. Stops pretty quick. Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. got back from the range test yesterday I already charged it up overnight but I killed it yesterday if you want to bring them over here young swag we got a very impressive and this is probably one of my new favorite bikes 30 miles on one charge 
Um, so 38.7 miles is what we have on the odometer. I had 8.8 .8 when I actually started riding. Really impressive. I have two complaints on this bike. Two complaints. First, I found out on my first test ride, we had 8.8 .8 miles on the odometer because on my first test ride, I actually had charged one up. I, so there's two charge ports on this thing. I assumed that they were connected. You know, internally, you could charge one up and one battery pack was connected to the second one, so they'd both charge overnight. I was wrong. You need to charge them both separately. And so the first time I did a range test, I got 8.8 .8 miles on it because it was only one battery pack that was charged up. The other one was completely dead. And so I was putting a bunch of strain on that single battery pack, but when they work together, they work a lot more efficiently. So we got a lot more range per battery pack with both of them fully charged. So maybe Vituvia, you start including two chargers in the package, but probably one of my new favorite bikes, 24 something, $2,500 or so for this one. So that's, that's in the average. So that's still in the average price range, but I get that that's a little bit more than like the cheap ones, but you do get a lot better specs than cheap ones. We hit 30 miles per hour, top speed, 30 mile range, topped out, just freaking flying down bike trails and city streets and everything. Really not bad, 30 mile range. That's what my Nissan Leaf had, my electric car that I bought. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. I'll wrap it up here. That's enough said. You guys saw all the footage. You guys saw the specs that it gets and now you know the full range which was 30 miles per charge is what I got. I am six foot three, 210 pounds. Uh, since that is relevant info, I say that every video, but it's relevant info. One of my new favorites, Vituvia, well done on this bike. I do need to get a suspension seat. It is a hardtail, so that's one downside of this bike. Um, it is a hardtail. So I'm, I'm just gonna pick up a suspension seat. I feel like at this point I just need to do that because I test so many hardtail bikes out. I should just swap seats every time I'm doing the range test. But I like to review these as well with the stock components on it. So there you guys have it. That is the Vituvia Gemini e-bike. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're in the market for an e-bike, this is definitely one of the good ones. Check it out, there's a link below. I'll catch you guys next time.